Okay, let's uh, take a look at this uh, math of signals to the circuit. This is the circuit we were talking about going through. <clears throat> I'd like to make some comments about it. The schematics, the input's always on the left. You see, here's the input, this point, and the output's always on the right. Now, truly, it would be, look better if it came the input all the way through the output in one nice, even stretch, but you can't do it that way. So you notice, here's my input, goes to a bandpass filter. Well, the idea of the bandpass filter is to select a certain bands of frequency. Here you've got an antenna, and that antenna itself is matching to the airs and beats. By the way, are you aware of the fact that the impedance of air is 377 ohms? Okay, so what happens is the antenna, TV antenna is an example possibly, is matching to the 377, and then what's the input to your TV? The old TVs were used to be 300 ohms. <coughs> the new TVs are coaxial, which is not 50 ohms, but 75 ohms. So what happens here is that this circuitry here is to match 377 to wherever it is, and this is probably the RFN. Right here is your RFN on your TV set as an example. This is a radio at home. And the bandpass filter is selecting the frequencies that exist over the band of the radio. And notice there's an arrow through this inductor. There's an arrow through the inductor. And what that means is the inductor is tuned. It's changing the resonant frequency of that particular circuit. And so it's tuned to the specific frequency you want. Any of you still use AM at all? Not much. FM? <clears throat> Don't you have to tune it to a specific frequency? I mean, you push a button now, but that's basically what's happening, is you're, it's being tuned to a specific frequency. And then you notice the first thing here is an RF amplifier, radio frequency amplifier. The idea of that is that uh, what happens is that you've got a lot of noise. And the idea of the RF amplifier is to boost the signal to be much greater than the noise in the circuit. So it improves the signal to noise ratio. That's something you're always looking for in testing, and that's a good signal, isn't it? Yeah. So you want to have a pretty decent signal to noise ratio. And right here, you see it going into this particular transformer. And it's going up this direction coming along here and it goes through this point here and you notice the top point here is what they call a beat frequency oscillator. <clears throat> that oscillator takes and mixes with the signal you have coming in and so what you have at that point is you have the <clears throat> beat frequency oscillator's frequency, you have the signal frequency coming in off the uh, radio area and then what happens is you mix them. You get the sum and the difference. To get a better control, it's easier to deal with lower frequencies than it is higher frequencies. <coughs> so you select the lower frequency through this low pass filter. You see what happens? Remember, you actually get the sum, which makes it higher. You get the difference, which makes it lower. And you'll see that the first thing here is an audio preamplifier. Audio preamplifier is taking the audio frequencies, which are music or talking or whatever it may be, <clears throat> and boosting that signal up. Then you go through a series of filters here and here and here and here. Now notice something. This is a filter <clears throat> right here. It's got inductors, resistors. Oops, didn't want to do that. <laughs> resistors and capacitors. Because we're using passive components, so it's a passive filter. Right here, what you've got is you've got an operational amplifier here. So this is known as an active filter, because you have an op amp or transistorized circuitry in it. So this is a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and a low pass filter. So these circuits make up active filters, which are much better for filtering something. A lot sharper band. And as we come out of there, it now goes into the audio amplifier, which boosts up. And have you ever heard the term um, matching impedances? 
You see what happens is this is set up to match that 8 ohm speaker to the output here. So this is a low output and higher input. You also notice this symbol for a ground is really a, not a ground, but more or less a chassis, meaning the circuitry is, has a common reference point specifically on there. Now, um, <coughs> at this point, some of the signal is sample. It says automatic gain control detector. And what happens is it goes through the circuitry here, back up through here, and you have automatic gain control. And the idea there is that when you switch from channel to channel to channel, it's an analog system, which this is, you'll get exactly the same level out from channel to channel. Also, when you actually move around, like in a car, something like that, it allows the signal to remain stable, specifically. Ever noticed in your digital radios how you'll switch to one and it's low volume, or switch to another and it's high volume, you have to keep adjusting it? You don't have to with the analog systems because they have this feedback control. So this is a diagram which we'll look at more and more. And some of the electronic symbols that are, exist here, as you notice, this is that little squiggly thing up here. It's called a fixed value resistor. Usually, most of them are carbon resistors in the older systems. And some of them are now are actually very, very film resistors and that kind of thing. And you'll see this is the fixed value capacitor. I'd like to point out to you that this is a little curve on the bottom. Now, in the early days, when I first got involved with electronics, you had two symbols. You had the one with the two bars. You had one with a curve. The one with the curve was an electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitor requires polarities. They have much higher values. And the ones that have just the two bars were supposedly for just non-ordinary capacitors. capacitors. <clears throat> the thing about this is it was very confusing with switching circuits. We had the two bars. So they transferred it to the little uh, curve on the bottom, specifically for all capacitors, specifically. Now, one of the terms that's used quite a bit incorrectly is called ground. This right here is really a chassis ground. This is one of the signals for an antenna. You'll see right here, this is an NPN bipolar transistor, negative, positive, negative. The NPN, this is a negative material, positive material, negative material. This is called the in-channel FET. Remember what I told you of why you actually like to use FETs? Remember? Anybody remember? Do you remember the term high input impedance? And why do you want a high input impedance? Because you want to not load the circuit. You want it to work out better that way. <clears throat> You notice here that anytime you have an arrow through something, inductor or capacitor or resistor actually, that implies something suggestible. You've heard the term potentiometer, haven't you? That's basically adjustable resistance. It's going off the potentiometer. <clears throat> You'll see here is a symbol for operational amplifier. You'll see that it has a negative and a positive to it on the inputs. <coughs> this is a diode or rectifier, <coughs> meaning that it changes the current flow in one direction. It only goes in one direction. <clears throat> it has to do with it when it's positive on this side, and negative on this side, you'll get conduction. Right here is a transformer. See the bars in the middle of it? What that implies is iron core transformer, which implies lower frequencies, doesn't it? Power line frequencies. Maybe down in, down in the uh, <clears throat> K-ohm. This is an iron core inductor. Where do you typically use those? And power supplies. That are heavy current power supplies. You want to restrict the variations in the actual current coming from the power supply. RF, radio frequency, AGC, automatic gain control. 
contiguous wave, SSB single sideband. Remember I told you you actually mix signals together? You get the sum and the difference? Well, the sum and the difference are sidebands. So you can grab one of them so it makes a single sideband. And a mixture itself. Now what happens here is that radio circuit components it has a passive filter. Now what makes a passive filter, guys? Passive components. What kind of components? Uh, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Very good. It's a passive circuit. <clears throat> it has one tuned circuit. Tuned circuit. Why do you need a tuned circuit? Too much frequency. You have several frequencies available. You want to tune into one. Like if you take a look at a radio station, <clears throat> it has a certain amount of frequencies from lower and up to higher. So the tune circuit grabs the one that's uh, the carrier <coughs> one. Three active filter circuits containing op amps. Now, why do we call them active filter circuit? Yes, the op amp. It could be transistors, couldn't it? Yes. It could be resist, uh, be diodes, a variety of different combinations. In fact, if you look at the internal circuitry of an op amp, it has several transistors in it. And you look at the circuitry itself. Two amplifiers that uses transistors, one amplifier that uses FET, field effect transistor. Again, why did I tell you you like to have a field effect transistor? What's its purpose? High impedance. That's that high impedance. <coughs> this is a block diagram. You know, when I used to repair equipment, I didn't really, really repair it off a block diagram. I had a schematic that identified where all the components are. Block diagram is just a general purpose, broadband kind of thing. You'll notice that we have signal from antenna. Then we go into the bandpass filter. That's selecting it. RF amplifier, automatic gain. And so the block diagram gives you an overview of what's happening. By the way, do you remember where I had the ohmic value of the speaker is? Eight. Eight. So this audio amp matches the impedance of that. So it has a low output impedance and a higher input impedance. This is showing you the circuits from the antenna. We already talked about this. So I'm going to go quickly, unless you have some questions that you may have. Diode, amplifier, transformer. What kind of transformer is this, guys? Iron core. Iron core. Iron core implies high frequencies or low frequencies? That's correct. Here is a mixer. What's the purpose of a mixer? What do you have? You have two signals in, don't you? One is the radio frequency signal that also contains the music or the voice, doesn't it? Those are in the sidebands. And so what happens here is you mix the beat frequency and the radio frequency, you create the sum and the difference. The difference being very lower and lower in frequency. It's always easier to work with lower frequency signals. That's why you zero in on the lower frequency. This is a low pass filter. What kind of filter is that? Is that active or passive? Passive. 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 Yeah. Very good. Passive. Notice this is the audio preamplifier. What's the purpose of the preamplifier? To boost the audio signal up much higher. Any of you ever look at the old record players? You ever see that? In which you put the needle on down? Yeah. All right? Now what's that needle? That needle actually is connected to a little coil. And when it vibrates, that little coil is around, freely around, a magnet. And when it vibrates, the vibration creates an electrical signal, converting magnetic into electrical signal. It's extremely low, really, really low. So the first thing they use is a preamplifier to boost the signal up. That's the purpose of a preamplifier. All right, now here are a series of filters, as you can see. And that labels the capacitors, inductors, but what is this? Is this an active or passive filter? Active, passive. 
It's active because you have effectively active components, in this case, the operational amplifier. All right, now what you have here is the uh, audio amp, and what the purpose of this particular amplifier is, is to get some power, because you're going to drive the speaker, so it's a power amplifier, typically. Boost the signal up. A lot of times they're what they call push-pull amplifiers, meaning you have a dual thing, and one does the positive peak, the other does the negative peak. This is the block diagram, which you've drawn over. This is the path. Notice that this, it's hard to show you how the signal comes in. Signal comes in, back around, up through here, back around, and out. In what I say, you're going to sample sudden signal right here, right? This point here. It's going back in the automatic gain control detector, and so it's going to add, if the signal is really weak, suddenly it's going to add to that signal and boost it up. So it looks better. How do you have that um, switch <coughs> between the high pass filter and the audio preamp? Right is this CW filter? Good question. What is that? This actually, well, that's kind of interesting because it doesn't go anywhere, does it? No. I, I, this came off of a schematic diagram of a radio, mm -hmm. and I have a feeling that it was never used. If you take a look at that switch, you've got to have an output associated with it, don't you? Mm -hmm. If I switch that down, what have I done? Broke I basically turned it off in a way. It's not a power off, but it basically turns the signal off because it just goes there. I believe that was probably for a function that they had to test the darn thing. Mute button. Yeah, mute button. <laughs> really good. Good question. This is um, obviously, what kind of device is this? What do you think? Looks like a box, doesn't it? If you look around this room, you see lots of boxes. They aren't actually open. It's basically a computer system. A much older computer system. But that's showing you uh, components that are distributed within the computer system itself. <coughs> 